Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to talk about the new little update. It's just a very, very minor one as well as the upcoming banners. In this update, there are quite a lot of things that are pretty good to note, especially because a lot of like people are still asking these kinds of questions. On top of that, the next banners are going to be really, really interesting. So without further ado, let's just jump into the content. And so what I want to talk about first is this guy right here, the version update announcement. Essentially, after the game comes back online, we're going to have all of these like new little tidbits. Some of them are really exciting so let's just start off with the first one which is where your AC is going to get her active skill cooldown reduced to two rounds. We're also going to get a fix on her equipment skill which would not take effect in certain environments. And so for people who don't have AC let me kind of describe this to you. First of all in the six stars you have like the converter archetype right so I'm talking like your Sariel, I'm talking about like your Gronru, your Nikinus, your AC like it's all the all four of these characters that you get from the beginner banner one of those are guaranteed. These guys are all like kind of the same archetype they have an active skill it is a preemptive and it converts four cells to their home color. However, since launch, AC's active skill has been on a cooldown of three rounds as opposed to two. For everyone else like Sariel, Gronru, Nikinus, they all have like freaking two rounds, whereas AC got three for some reason. So this is a good buff to AC because this just kind of like makes her come in line with the other units. I think this is well deserved. I don't know why AC was like two rounds before. She was getting memed on before because like she just was not as good as the other ones. Everyone was making fun of Nikinus, but really AC was the trash one all along. On the other hand, we have have a fix for an issue where AC's equipment skill would not take effect in certain environments. So as for this one, let me just go over here and show you guys. You can see her equipment here, like essentially she gets a void status and like every so often she can actually heal, right? Like I have AC, right? And this is like so inconsistent. Like I've only seen this happen maybe like once around sometimes. And a lot of the time it just doesn't happen. So this is a really, really good fix. Nothing else really needed to be said about that one is just really straightforward. This is a really good fix and this is a really good change. All right, next we've got secret store rewards. After the next Next secret store refresh, we've got two recharger packs coming into the secret store. Now, this is another really, really good one because like recharger packs, if you guys don't know, it's essentially your stamina or your prism. And what you can do is you can kind of like push progression with these. Either that or you could also actually just save them for like when we get like inevitably events. You guys can already tell events are probably going to be like very, very similar to Arknights. There's not really like any other way that they could do it. And so you're probably going to be like grinding out materials and stuff with like ascensions or like leveling up. And more often than not, and hopefully, hopefully, because this is pure spec speculation. The events are going to have like better drop rates, for example, for those mats. All right, moving on, we've got fix an issue where navigators were unable to unlock the Colossus rec room. All I can say is F, but like no longer F because like you guys got it fixed. Fix an issue where some navigators couldn't claim eight day growth quest rewards after Colossus reached 5,000 mood. All right, that's a little bit sad, but like it's fixed now. So hopefully you guys are okay. All right, next one is really, really big. We've got adjusted the duration of the eight day growth quest. So the original 14 day event cycle has been extended by seven days. And so now it is going to last 21 days in total and I think this is a fantastic change. For me personally I was like rushing my forest team to try to get that freaking uh, four times clear level 15 spire and it's so so freaking annoying and I think in 21 days it is kind of manageable. I do think that 21 days is enough for you to build four teams and actually clear all of the spires up to level 15. Fantastic change I love to see it man. Alright next we've got fix an issue where Korax's secondary element would not display after reaching ascension 3. So this is a great fix because it actually puts Korax in line with the other 5 and 6 stars so secondary element, what that means is that there should be two elements at least. So as you can see, it says that Korax only has one. Whereas for example, Klecken, Barton, you can see everyone else literally has two elements. I think this is a good time for a refresher on dual elements. What exactly does it do? And so if you have two elements, what it's saying is that essentially, for example, if you take Barton and you walk over like yellow squares, then Barton will attack. However, he will attack at 35% of his original damage rather than 100% if he walked over blue squares. For units that are like doubly specialized, so for example, Klecken, who is two times specialized in the blue squares. Klecken will actually deal 35% more damage when he's walking on blue squares. And so as you guys can see, it adds a little bit of variability into the gameplay, right? Do you want like some really focused characters or do you want someone that's a little bit more flexible? And so for Korax, who seemed to be the black sheep, he now has a second element, which is great. All right, moving on. We next have fixed a text display error. Okay, that's fine. It's just a text display error for some description, right? Not too much to talk about there. Next one, fixed an issue where the Japanese skill upgrade text from six star Aurorian Wrath was incomplete after ascending from Ascension 2 to Ascension 3. Don't think this one affects us because it's a Japanese skill upgrade text. And so let's just move on. And this is an interesting one. Adjusted secondary element bonus damage on Aurorian info screen from 20 to 35% to match the actual in-game effect in this version. So guys, just to be clear, and this is not a nerf or a buff. This is just adjusting like the text to make sure that it matches what the actual in-game effect is. So what I'm trying to say is that since the start of the game, the dual element has been 
between adding like 35%. It was actually never 20%. It said 20% from the start, but really in game, we were actually doing 35% extra damage. Again, either adding as a bonus on top of like your base element or like doing it to your secondary element that's different. So other than that, I'm not going to talk about the other ones because it's just more fixes to like descriptions and stuff. And lastly, we have this one, AC's active skill cooldown buff. This is just kind of like the rationale. And it's essentially saying that they like completely agree with what we're saying. AC kind of sucked like when in comparison to the other converters. All right, with that being said, that is the patch notes done. And so hopefully this will be up very, very soon. The last thing I do want to mention for this version update is that they have shown us what the regular maintenance kind of compensation is. And it is 150 Lumamba and like one of those packs. And I got that information from here. So you see here, Lumamba 150 in one recharger pack. So if you guys don't know, recharger pack is 60 stamina. Honestly, like my opinion on this is that this is kind of stingy. It's the same kind of stingy that like Arknights does. It's like half a roll and some stamina. The stamina is fine. It's like half a freaking roll. Like that's kind of like meh. I guess I'm more used to like some of the other more generous games where like we get like maybe five or even a tenner. Back when I played Dragalia Lost, they were just throwing tenors at us like no tomorrow, man. And yeah, to see like 150 Lumen member, like, you know, I'm not complaining. It's like, it's whatever, but it's kind of like meh. It's not really, it doesn't really like wow me away. All right, let's hop onto the next topic, which is this new rotating recruitment. So what I believe is happening here is that we are actually going to get a new banner. So that means that we're going to have four banners. I think we're going to have two limited character ones. So that's Carlene and Uriel, who will be added to the mainstay banner after they are removed. And then we're going to have the OG banner, which is like the mainstay banner. And then we're going to have this one. If I was to guess, I would say that we would be using the yellow star flares on this one. Again, do not quote me on that. This is purely speculation and this is going to be coming very, very soon. So we'll figure it out. However, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of like very, very similar to the Arknights one. Now, before I talk about these two characters, I do want to address this guy over here. And what this is, is essentially we've got two new six stars coming out and this was announced on the JP live stream. So this is Sinsa, which is the Rediesel wrench leader. However, I do not know this character. I'm not familiar with her and you can see that they are fire and thunder Aurorians. Now, a lot of people are asking, oh man, are we getting this banner or are we getting this banner? So again, this is more speculation, but this banner is actually coming out in like, uh, well, actually a couple of hours. And we still actually have like, I believe a week or so until Uriel or Carlene's one actually goes. And so I think that these characters are going to be the ones that are replacing Uriel and Carlene. So moving forward, I think we're actually going to be having four banners. So two limited. So we've got like Sinsa and this one for the next ones. We're going to have the mainstay, which is our OG one. And then we're also going to have this rotating recruitment one. Okay. With that being said, let me have like a quick evaluation of Iridan and Midgard because these are two fantastic characters. Yes, they're infinitely waifu, but like I would say that these are two of the best characters in the game. And so would I roll for them? Yeah, I would. And so with that, let me kind of give like my rationale and like my overview evaluation kind of thoughts. So let's start with Midgard, who is a six star forest. Forest right now has like not that great of a reputation, especially when they only have like four six stars, one of which is the legendary Aurorian. However, Midgard is quite possibly in a lot of people's opinions, like the best character in the game. So let's first talk about her skill, which is to teleport to any location within three surrounding clusters. So that's three rings around her and deals 250 damage to enemies within one surrounding cluster. So what that's saying is that she can teleport to anywhere within three clusters and then deal AOE damage around her. So the interesting thing about this one is that the damage is doubled when there is only one enemy in the area of attack, which is pretty insane. But the really insane part is what comes next, which is the final damage increases by 15% for each enemy killed. Okay, wait, I think the most insane part is this part, which is it stacks up to 10 times. So as you can imagine, final damage can be increased by 150% if you kill enough people. So as you can tell, Midgard is a mass murderer, so we should report her to the authorities. However, I'm not going to do that and I'm just going to pull for her. Actually, that's also not true. I have no pulls. I actually, I legit have not a single pull left. All right. And so I want to talk about this skill because this is so incredibly good. First, you've got to teleport and you've got AOE damage. This damage also has like a stacking mechanic, but on top of that, the best part about this skill, I think, is the skill CD. The skill CD is freaking two turns. Like, holy moly. Having a teleport and like an AOE damage on a two turn skill CD, that's pretty freaking good. Some people are going to argue there are better teleporters or like there are better effects like that are attacked on with the teleport. However, when you look at the skill CD, I think Midgard's is probably the shortest one with like such a stacked effect. And so as you can see, I am very, very impressed by the skill. Moving on. So we do have an equipment. So after activating a chain combo or active skill, if the target's HP is lower than 30%, launch one more attack dealing 100% attack damage. On top of that, if the target has less HP than Midgard's attack after this bonus attack, kill it. So essentially guys, this is like an execution skill. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like this really like helps you clean up like the smaller mobs and potentially execute like the bigger ones, right? A lot of the time, I think the utility in this, like it's going to save you extra rounds. It's just going to do so much work for you. You guys can already imagine like how useful this is. It's very similar to that item in like the secret territory where it just 
just instantly kills like monsters that are under 10% HP. So yeah, the equipment, very, very mint. So next, let's talk about the chain combo where she deals damage to three to four enemies within two to three surrounding clusters. So essentially, she's kind of like sniping within like three surrounding clusters. And honestly, like, three surrounding clusters is a lot of range. I think that's quite a decent chain combo. Like I quite like it, especially because like when you have these ones, it does not have like a pattern. And especially for forest, they have like some really weird patterns sometimes. Sometimes they have like the crosses or sometimes they have like the column ones. This one is a really straightforward one. It's kind of like homing and it just makes sure it like hits every time. And so yeah, honestly, I think she is a fantastic sniper. Last, we've got the breakthrough. So she just gets a preemptive on the third tube and we've got the active skill enhancement removes active skill cooldown if the target is killed with the skill. Incredible, absolutely incredible. But like, again, that's like a whale's territory. The last thing I want to talk about is that if you go through her skill, her equipment and the chain combo, you will see that it is not dependent on like the green element. And so therefore Midgard is a fantastic, probably one of the best off color element captains. If you guys have watched my other videos, like she meets all of the requirements for a good off element captain. She provides big impact, big damage. However, she is not dependent on any of her base elements. Honestly, this is great. And I think all Midgard players should like, you know, they should be rejoicing in her. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Iridin. Uh, Iridin is one of my favorite characters. Let's freaking go. All right, so Iridin is actually quite different where she is a converter as opposed to a sniper. So the skills here are going to be like completely different. Converts any two selected tiles to yellow prism tiles. So this is actually incredibly strong because essentially on a three skill CD, she can provide up to six yellow prism tiles that do need a little bit of big braining, but it is on a three skill cooldown. Three turns for six yellow prisms. Like honestly, that's freaking good. And the reason that it's six yellow tiles is because like they're prism tiles. So I actually used Iridin in my CBT footage. So if you don't know how this works, just like go watch that. But essentially when you walk over a prism tile, it's just going to extend your walking range by two. So if you walk on the tile from the bottom, it's going to give you an extra two yellow tiles after that. Moving on to her equipment, we've got Grant one gold marsh mark when passing through a prism tile. Each stack of gold marsh mark increases chain combo damage by 5% and normal attack by 3%. When triggering Aurora time, converts the starting tile to a prism tile. What? Can you guys just freaking imagine? Like, holy moly, just making more prism tiles. She is so freaking broken, man. However, on top of that, she is also dealing a bunch of damage because of all of those passives. Just stack, 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 like so much synergy here. It's so freaking good. However, you will notice that she has less attack than like your sniper from before. And so guys, I do want to remind you guys that there are stat differences between the different archetypes. If you're looking at utility, especially converters, generally they're going to have lower stats. So for example, let me compare her with Wrath. You can already see here, Wrath is a sniper. She's got 3341 attack versus 2463 and lower defense and lower HP. However, they are still very, very important. All right, so let's move on to her chain combo, which is quite standard. So she just deals like some AOE damage. I personally think it's good because I strongly believe in like more damage for converters because in chain combos, you can't really do that much with it, right? Usually you're going to be doing more damage or you're going to be doing like some heals. These ratios are quite decent. Like it is what it is. And lastly, let's talk about her breakthrough, which is that active skill enhancement that selected tiles become enhanced tiles. And so for you guys who are not familiar with the concept of an enhancement tile, it essentially just grants you two times the connection damage of a normal tile. Essentially, you do more damage. That's essentially the crux of it. On the last tube, what you have is changes active skill to preemptive strike, which is honestly incredible. Imagine straight off the bat, you can just get like freaking six extra yellow tiles. Honestly, that's so freaking good. But I guess that is kind of the downside to Iridin. A lot of the converters right now that are in the game, they are like all preemptive skills. And so what that means is that turn one, you can convert a whole bunch of squares and actually just go off and do a massive combo. For example, for me, I have IC and Faust who are both preemptive converters. And so on turn one, I get an extra eight squares from the both of them. However, talking from kind of like a tempo kind of thing, I think over the long run, Iridin is better in terms of tempo. And what I mean by that is like, you know, in my example, I get eight at the front, but like, you know, then what do I get after that? I think in the long run, characters like Iridin will provide you like more value over time. And characters like Faust and AC are going to be like little bit spikes of damage like that. But yeah, Iridin is still really freaking good. Like I will admit that there is a little bit more of like a big brain aspect to it. Whereas for me, like AC, Sario, Nikinis, it's all like Ungabunga for me. All right. Wow. I think I've talked a lot there. I hope I've not gone like freaking crazy on the time. And so with that being said, let us wrap up this video. I've got a secret message for you guys and that's Iwidin. I don't know why I do this. I don't know why I do this to you guys. I don't know why I do this to myself. So if you guys could drop Iwidin down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that because it lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video and I'm very, very grateful for that. And if you guys have gotten something out of this video, kind of learned something or enjoyed it, then consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow, a pin. You guys already know what to do. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions, come to the Discord. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some ways down in the description below. Other than that, it is time to bid you farewell. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.